Good evening, everyone. My name is Heath Haskins, Code Prime, and welcome back to another Lumber Tycoon 2 video. I hope the intro was a little bit quieter. I've had a lot of complaints about it, and yes, I've meant to do something about it for a really long time, but tonight I actually did, so let me know how it went, because I can't actually listen to it until after this is all done, and I'm probably not going to record uh, a second time, so <clears throat> we're just going to go with whatever it was this time and hope that it was right. So, last time we left off, I was over here complaining about a whole bunch of stuff and apologizing for my rants, and you guys went off on me and were like, don't you ever apologize about talking inside your videos, you, that's why we watch you, so <laughs> I'm sorry that I said I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, sorry, not sorry, I guess. Um, anyhow, we have lots of doors to build, lots of things to do. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, that right there is a yellow bridge. It's going to go all the way across over to the water cave where the yellow wood awaits us. But we got to get over there first. So, um, what was it? 21 doors is how many we need? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, gosh. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, gosh, that was wrong. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. That should be enough doors for this episode. I'm just going to hit B, back out. Uh, now, I think I had a Maniacs at one time, didn't I? Uh, wait, does this take only one hit, or... Does it take two hits? Yeah, it takes two hits. So, to speed up the process, let's see if we have a... A Maniacs anywhere. I should have one just, like, laying around somewhere, right? You would think... I might not have one on this base. We'll just take a quick peek quick peek around and see if we have one. If not, then I'm not worried about it too much. Doesn't look like I've got one. Hmm. Unless I, if you saw one, then just throw it in the comments down below. That's an end times axe. So, oh well. Off we go into another wonderful Lumber Tycoon 2 video. So, um, at work today, I got to um, do a couple of help desk tickets and a couple of uh, little Cody things here and there. I'm trying to figure out a way to use Unity 3D with um, business side applications and databases to create basically an application that can be used on phones that will have business application use, which I think would be an amazing thing because Unity 3D is used for creating games, right? Uh, kind of like Unreal Engine. Imagine if you used Unreal Engine to create business side applications. That would be amazing. That would be like a breakthrough in gaming technology. With Unity 3D, I think I can do it. That might have been way too long. I might not have needed that much wood. Wait, where'd it go? Hello? There we go. To get stuck. What's going on here? Hey. Do get in there, you. Oh, there it goes. Huh. That was weird. Oh my goodness. Look at this work of art over here. Who did this? Who is this? The Chittle Killer, killer Faz. Ooh, Donuts signed. Gabe, KSI. Nate, Savage. I don't think I see a Code Primate on here anywhere. <gasps> Dude. <laughs> what in the world? Uh, hey, Turtle. You have, uh, you have some wood here, dude. Just saying. You have quite a bit of wood. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to go over here then. Hi, buddy. Just so I know, you, you got a lot of stuff here. Got tons of Roblox, Robux and visit the blah, blah, blah. The browser generate ton of... Uh, I hate bots. Hi. Hey, whoa. 
Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Can't get distracted. So, Killer Turtle, amazing base, uh, awesome art, but I gotta get. <laughs> I've got to go do these things. <clears throat> sorry, I, re I really don't want to delay at getting this bridge done. I want to make sure that I have it done before uh, Thanksgiving. That's that's my goal, which is, you know, get it done before Christmas or something. Uh, this is not going to work though because I think his base is causing so much lag. Mmm, that could be a problem. What, is this one over here? Yeah, look at that. Oh, oh, come here, come here, you. Good, I can do that one. I'm gonna need a one by one, aren't I? Hmm. I wonder. Now I've made one by one saws before, but. Hold on, hold on. That is a thought. Okay, so like this little pattern thing that I did over here, where it kind of goes up, down, up, down like that, right? It's a, it's a good way to make sure big pieces of wood go across smoothly. So like some that go across multiple, see how it, it like touches the top of all of them and it's nice and smooth. If you were to space these out and turn them up vertically, then pieces that were not able to go across all of them would fall down in between. So essentially you could have a sorting system of like sort by length. Very possible. That is very do doable. Oh, this right now is, is going crazy. By the way, we have yellow names now. I don't, and from what my admins and protégés have told me, that is a Roblox update. That is not a Lumber Tycoon 2 update. Whenever I first jumped in, I'm like, oh my god, the Voltio made me admin. <laughs> it's new. No, I don't have any kind of admin panel or admin rights here. Uh, so I know some of you are like, Code, what are you talking about? Admin panel. How do you know about the admin panel? I know things about this game. I'm just saying. I've been playing for a little while. It's okay. I know. Oh, my teeter-totter fell down. This thing we used to use to, to launch um, pieces of wood all over the place. Here, I can, I can blink. Oh. Well, can I move that over a little bit? Do not become the yellow wood. Do not become the yellow wood. Move. Let's go rotate. Rotate. All right, let's move you out of the way so you're not in danger and you can move over there a little bit Basically a lot of the times the wood will get stuck in What happened in the ground and there's not too much you can what okay, you know what? Let's try that. Why did you do that with a okay, let's just do that what? It's not... There we go. My goodness. <sighs> A lot of the times the wood will just fall into um, the floor. And there's not too much you can do about it. But that's okay. Here, let's... Uh, I don't want to run the risk of one of these accidentally going in. Making a gold bridge? Uh, nope. Yellow wood bridge. To the cave. Noink. <clears throat> a lot of times in life, you're going to run into little obstacles, and you're going to run into things that will require some troubleshooting. And... That is a skill set that I don't think you can, can't really teach. Um, there are certain methods, like, depending on what it is. If it's something with computers, you use the seven layers, which are application, presentation, session, network, transport, data link. 
application presentation session, network transport, data link. Yeah, seven. No, that's six. Physical. Physical. Oh, man. I'm <laughs> Physical. Check the cable. Make sure the cable's plugged in. So whenever you're thinking of the, the scale, you always start at the lowest problem, what the most common thing could be. So for example, you're not able to get internet on your computer. Is it plugged in? Is it powered on? Check those two things first, you know? And then you work your way up from there. Or you could go in complete reverse order like I do. <laughs> Check the application first. Turn it off and back on again. Did it work? Um, not all problems can be troubleshot like that. Just saying. A lot of the problems that you encounter in life and on a day-to-day -day basis of... Okay, come on. Day-to-day -day basis. There we go. They're not clear-cut answer problems. And you're never going to have the answer for everything. Um, you can be pretty well prepared, but never fully ready for life. And that goes with anything. Like, <clears throat> um, once you're older and you decide to go get a job, you could prepare the entire time for that interview. You could have the most perfect resume. And you're still going to get that weird nervous feeling the moment that you walk in those doors and you know that you're going to have to go sit in front of somebody and talk to them about the job. Relax. That feeling that you're getting, everybody gets it. Everyone gets it. Don't think that, oh, this is special and it's just happening to me. <gasps> no, it's not. Everybody gets that feeling. Now, how you handle it is different from person to person. So, for example, if you have a test coming up, and you've studied for the test, you're all prepared and you're ready for it, you know the answers, it gets down in front of you and all of a sudden you find out there's like 150 questions and you've got 30 minutes to complete them all. Just that alone is an intimidation factor that you don't, don't, don't need to worry about. Do your best, fill out the easy ones first, the ones that you actually know, and continue on. Make sure you come back to the ones that you get stuck on. And I promise you will probably find the answer to a lot of the questions inside the questions that are already there. <clears throat> Anyhow, life lessons with code. <clears throat> For example, this, this thing that's going on at work that I need to develop this, um, this application. For the most part, all of the data stuff, all the programs that I've been working with are internal. So I haven't had to worry too much about external securities, usernames, passwords, authentication, stuff like that. <clears throat> now that I'm moving into the realm of like a Unity 3D application that's going to be accessing Azure SQL servers, it's a little different. And just the way that I'm, I'm thinking about the things, I'm not sure if I'm prepared for. But you know what? I also came clean and I told my boss, I'm like, hey, this is something I've never done before. Um, we might go in a different direction, but I really want to try this. I want to try it because it's a new technology. It's something that we've never done before. And it's something that I would really love to get back into because I haven't programmed in C Sharp since 2016. I mean, that was three years ago, almost four years ago. So... I know C Sharp. I, I've programmed in it before. I made some awesome ASP MV, M, MVP. I want to say MVP. It's not MVP. It's something else. MVC. Hmm. I know it's uh, data, visual, and process, or something like that. Anyhow, anyhow, it's a it's a form of ASP.NET, and it's a way that like you separate the three different tasks into visual, um, data, and transport or something like that. See, even now I can't I couldn't tell you heads or tails from it because I haven't programmed in it so long. I've been programming in Cold Fusion, and for any of you that know Cold Fusion out there, just hashtag Cold Fusion in the comments down below. Whenever I was using it, oh gosh. <clears throat> Whenever I was using it, um, my teacher in school, 
And yes, I was I was going to school as an adult with two kids, married and full time job anyway. Uh, my teacher, she um, asked what languages I know and stuff, and I said, "Well, we mo mainly use Cold Fusion." She goes, "Oh my god, really? <laughs> it's such a dinosaur." It is. It is an old, old language, but it works, and it's secure, and it's tested and tried and true, and my company does like loves it. And there's still a lot of companies that still use it. And of course, then again, there's still a lot of companies that use AS400s, and they still use um, RPG and COBOL. <laughs> Just because it works doesn't mean it's the best, but I'm not going to argue. So... Before going to work at this job, I'd never programmed Cold Fusion a day in my life. It took me about three weeks to learn it once I uh, once I started getting into it, and I mean it's been a pretty good learning curve ever since. Oh gosh, was that right? Yeah, that works. So. <clears throat> I, I really like the language. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. It is it is a good language to me. Um, I've also gotten into jQuery, which I'd never touched before this job. Went out and just learned it myself. Um, JavaScript I was already pretty good at. HTML I was already pretty good at. But it's been changing. Like HTML5, that is... <laughs> It's more data about data than anything else. Like, instead of just having an input, you have like telephone number. It's very, code, need help making doors? Um, nah, I'm okay. Thank you. Uh, that's that's no offense to, to Turtle, all right? That is just strictly me being paranoid because of the whole whitelisting thing. I am paranoid about... Oh, lag spike. <laughs> I was about to say, is that a spook tree? And then I'm like, oh wait, it's past October. Could be a spook tree. No. We're going to have to wait until next year to go spook tree hunting again. Oh, oh well. Ooh, I can grab it right there. Sweet. I hope I'm doing an okay job. I mean, there's always doubt in my mind that I might be completely messing up you kids and, and parents as well. I could be giving completely wrong advice. Um, I could be completely messing up my kids and not doing a good job as a parent, you know? But there's always going to be that fear in life, and just because that fear's there doesn't mean that you should stop living. You should always keep going toward and keep trying to become a better person, no matter what. Even if you're the best at your job, if you're 100%, the only thing you can do is improve. Keep going. Don't ever give up. Don't ever stop learning new stuff. And trust me, the internet is a huge place. A huge place. You can learn anything you wanted to. If you wanted to learn how to program an original Nintendo Entertainment System game, you can. And it's possible. And the tools nowadays are free. And you could go and make your own Nintendo game. In fact, I would highly encourage it. If you wanted to get into game development and stuff like that, start with something very simple like an Atari game. Go grab an emulator. Grab the source codes. Grab certain stuff and, and do a mod. It's a great way to learn. Not saying download illegal ROMs, blah, blah, blah. But it is definitely a, a good starting point. And a lot of people will push Python. They're like, Python this, Python that, Python blah, 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 blah. That was not my first language. My first language was Visual Basic. VB. And that was back whenever Win32 had just opened up its APIs and Windows 98, 95 were still very popular and big. Of course, that's just me going, back in my days, sonny, I used to do this, blah, 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 blah. I don't, I don't want to, like, get off on a tangent on that, but, oh gosh, come on, come on. But there is a lot of difference in between today's programming languages and what we used to do in the past. Especially in between, like, machine code, whoa, 
and assembly. I tried learning assembly by itself one time. <laughs> and by the way, if you don't know what assembly is, that is a low level programming language. So I'll take a, a quick second to kind of explain programming languages. Um, you have a low level language. Okay, first off, you have machine language. Machine language literally is zeros and ones. It's 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 the the thing that the the machine itself knows how to read. Okay. A step up from that is like hexadecimal, which, which would still be pretty much machine language. Um, you would have to know the opcodes and stuff like that. You would have to know the actual operator, um, the pointers. You'd have to know the, where the pointers have to go inside memory, stuff like that. A next step up is assembly. And assembly will talk directly to the processors. So you know how we talk about 64-bit and x86 systems and stuff like that? <clears throat> an x86 system is an old 32-bit system. The reason we call it x86 is because of the architecture of the chip itself. The reason we call 64-bit system 64 is because it's got a 64-bit instead of 32-bit architecture system. <sighs> Anyhow, an assembly language is stuff like push, move, pop, and it's literally like pushing data onto the stack, moving data off of uh, one of the controllers. And there's different controllers in, in, in here. I don't want to get too into detail about it. It's just assembly is a very powerful language to know. It is not feasible to write full scale programs in. You could, that's a lot of code. So the next step up from that is what's called a higher level language. So Visual Basic is technically a higher level of language. And why? Because Visual Basic will take and and this is this is also old school. Um, Visual Basic will compile into assembly and it will control control stuff through DLLs to make the windows to make stuff happen on the screen that you don't have to worry about. So it becomes a drag and drop language, it becomes visual, visual basic. And even Visual Basic nowadays is not the same as what it was whenever I was growing up. Because Visual Basic had its own IDE, its own own interface and stuff like that. Hold on. I gotta figure out how to get this one down. Blink. Ooh. Move this up here. There we go. Move this up here. There we go. I wonder if I'm going to be able to. Am I going to be able to fix this? Okay. Because right now all the doors are open. I guess it'd just be. No! Don't fall down, code. Hit B. Bravo. Undo. Control Z. Control Z. I messed up. Anyhow. What I was talking about, uh, I don't even remember what I was talking about. I was going off on programming or something like that. Anyhow, uh, if you want to become a programmer, <laughs> you will definitely figure it out real fast if you're going to be interested in it or not. Um, as for me, I am extremely interested in it. It might seem very boring to a lot of people, but for those select few individuals, knowing the language knowing what's going on in the background, knowing the caveats. That right there, in my opinion, I'm not saying this as, as a factual thing, in my opinion, knowing the code gives you an insight into the hacking world, how the hacks work, how to exploit things, knowing what the programmer was looking for and finding ways around that. That alone is one of the reasons I took on programming in the first place, was because of the ability to know these things. So, a lot of people ask me, which which one did you do first, hacking or programming? And I'm like, they were kind of hand in hand. Being a hacker and being a programmer were kind of the same thing. It's, it's like two sides to, to the coin. So, just FYI. For those of you who are wondering, 
Or for those of you who weren't wondering, you know, I'm going to tell you anyway. I think I'm not going to be able to grab that one. That will get us to where we need to go. Huh. <laughs> okay. Down. That one. Move up here. Now, if I jump straight out from here. Yay! I did it. Nice. Skills. Skills. Oh, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, no, no! <laughs> okay, up, 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 and away. Open, 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 open. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, I'm just kind of showing off my skills at uh, building door bridges here. Down one, there we go. For those of you that don't know what I'm doing, um, I am attaching these doors to themselves so they can move as one unit later on. This is the last one. Oh my goodness, it's the last one. It's the final door bridge. Do -do 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 -do. Wee. <clears throat> Oh no no. <laughs> no no stop 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 no lag lag spike no <laughs> uh, twenty six minutes we we got four minutes left I really want to get this down and and I'm gonna reload the base itself I gotta get those doors closed first and then once I get it reloaded I will go walk across it and we'll see how far we got man we had a we had a really good chat today. Thank you for being here, and thank you for being you, and thank you for just everything you guys have done for me. Because your comments really... Oh, gosh. Oh, stop, stop. <gasps> no, stop, 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 stop. Oh, gosh. <sighs> okay, well, I'm going down. Your comments really did help me to see something today that I, I wasn't aware of. That I did. I apologized for talking, and I shouldn't do that. I should be able to get on here and basically just rant and rave and talk about whatever I like and whether or not you guys are listening or you're too young to understand it or you're too old to care, whatever the case may be. <laughs> it's still me and it's still just talking. So I think that's a good thing. And I'm, I'm glad that it helps people. It helps me to understand that there are people out there that are like me that there are people with the same mindset as me and that not everybody wants to see bad things on the internet. That's a good thing. Don't get me wrong. I love a good fail army video every once in a while. But I'm glad you're here. And um, I'm glad that you're subscribed. Even if you're not. If you're, if you're just watching, you don't have to subscribe. But, you know, you might throw that, throw that on there. Who knows? Almost. Almost to the top. Ah, there's a high bridge. Whew. Oh, 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 come on. Come on. Get up there. Yep. There we go. Alright, let's try this again. Oh. <clears throat> oh, oh, nope, nope, nope. Stay. Oh, 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 stay. Oh, come on, come on. You're doing a good job there, Code. There we go. Ooh, all right. Close, oh. Close, oh. Close, oh. Skills! Let's go, boy! See, that's, that's how I do it. See, Ninja might say, let's go, boys. And when I get a door bridge that works like that, them skills. <laughs> them door bridge skills, though. Oh, the lag. Dude, your base is literally a killer. 
All right. Um, man, that door is just barely hanging on there, isn't it? Okay. So let's go ahead and jump down here. Menu. So load. Code, where are you? I gotta load a small base. Is three a small base? I cannot remember. I don't even remember what three is. Anyhow, that should save. Oh, there's a mani axe. Dude, wait. Where was that at? It was like right below me. <laughs> We're at 30 minutes. I'm going to load this up again. And then off we go. All right. Oh, I remember that base. Okay. going to hit quit. There we go. Get a false. And we're going to do a load. Slot four. Slot four. 36 seconds ago. Wait, wait. Please sign my base. I'll sign it. I will sign it. Give me a second. By the way, stick around because uh, I know that you probably just got a notification going off right now that I posted another video. Stay until the end. Promise the video is still going to be there by the time you get back. Oh, you silly, silly goose. You silly, <clears throat> silly goose. I have to have slot one. Oh, no. I said I was going to sign up my guy's base. <laughs> Code, you're a hor horrible person, Code. Horrible, horrible person. All right, that one's slot. I'm looking for that plot, that first plot. I've got to have that first plot. Otherwise, it's it's pointless. By the way, day four of No Shave November. Coming at you. There we go. That's what I need. Slot four. Load. Quickly, quickly. Before somebody grabs it. Please. Savage Cake 101 fan? Is Savage Cake a YouTuber? There we go, a select. Confirmed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, I just got like hyper all of a sudden because I'm super excited that this is coming together so quickly. There it was. There was the Manny Axe sitting right there at the bottom ready for me to chop and I just I walked right over it <sighs> that's okay we'll remember it for tomorrow I'm gonna be working on this for a little bit so all right here we go here we go here we go all right. down you go yay wait did we leave anything no doors are up there so let's go left and right there we go hey they they joined me a Kelish five Achilles five. A Achilles, Achilles. Achilles. I will go and send your base because I said I would, and it's pretty amazing that you followed me in. So here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Go go go. By the way, this is automated. This is no hands. Uh, just using the the chat exception thing where you hit chat and then you hit the the backspace thing while you're walking and it never mind <sighs> let's see how far that 21 doors got us please tell me did it get past did it get past <gasps> it did yeah. oh stop stop so you guys know what that means it's time to start building down we are going to start building downward from here. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to build across at all, but I will definitely be able to build a bridge downward right there. So, please sign your base. I will. I will. I promise. So, right there we go. Let's face this way. Oh, uh, in time, Zax. Oh, we're getting closer. We are getting so close. That's that's going to be a little bit to get down there, isn't it? Shouldn't be too hard. I think. I think we can do it. 
it's going to be a little bit before I can get it finished, though. Thank you, everyone, for watching this episode of Lumber Tycoon 2 with me, Heath Haskins, Code Primate. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Do all those cool things I'm supposed to call out like a good little YouTuber, but it's your choice. If you do it, awesome. If not, that's cool, too. Subscribe, like, comment, all your opinions. That's why I'm here. Love you guys very much. Have a great night. We'll talk to you very soon. Outro.